Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. It is a hot one today, y'all. Like, it is warm. I think we might be in the 90s. So, we're gonna do a garden tour though. So it is July the 1st. Um, this video should have come out in June, except June was a busy month. <laughs> <laughs> from the 18th until pretty much the end of the month um we were either gone or doing something so it's a busy month but we're gonna do a garden tour all the new things so if you are new here hey y'all <laughs> um i grow in my backyard i am in an urban setting i grow in no dig raised beds bags containers However, I can grow, that's how I grow. I also grow in ground. Um, so, we're gonna walk around the garden. I did have some losses, y'all. <laughs> I had some losses while I was away. I'm going to show you my losses. My son did an amazing job, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that out there. He does not garden. He does not deal with animals. He doesn't do any of that. Um, and he kept my garden alive, with the exception of a few things, and I'm gonna show you what those are. He kept my animals alive, and so, I, I appreciate him very much for doing that while we were gone for all of that time. Y'all, don't forget to hydrate. I'm in zone 7B in Virginia. It is hot. I don't know what zone you're in. You, you know what? Leave me a comment. Tell me what zone you're in and what state you're in. And if it is hot, very, very hot where you are because it's very, very hot where I am. Um, but don't forget to hydrate. Let's go ahead and look around the guy. Y'all going to be so proud of me for cleaning up that orchard area like i had had enough y'all i had enough like i wanted to be wild but not wild to the point that i can't walk through it all right let's get to the let's get to the garden tour <laughs> all right so we had raspberry trying to take over again i went ahead and cut that out uh the the roses are still looking just as bad because i haven't been taking care of them same thing with the lavender in the back. It's another rose. Um, but of course, this raspberry bush is looking amazing. These raspberries don't start to uh, give me raspberries until the fall. At least that's what happened last year. Uh, so I'm not really sure what they are, <laughs> what, what variety they are. Um, the oregano that we cut, I don't know how many times now, is growing back. It's time to cut that again. I finally cleaned up my laundry room today. That's going to be a separate video because I am recording it. Um, and so I'm able to now go ahead and harvest this stuff because I have somewhere for it to dry. It's where the potatoes are right now. The comfrey is starting to grow really nicely. So I'm going to start chopping that to start making comfrey tea. More comfrey tea because I already made some. I harvested some peaches the other day, yesterday, matter of fact, they were delicious. So the peaches are starting to ripen. Most of them were on this tree that I pulled. Um, and so they're starting to ripen. I normally cut my trees at some point in the summer. And I know people don't, but I do. And it works. I'm in a small space, so I can't have these trees grow into this insane size <laughs> so i just cut a little bit like maybe right here it'll start growing again um and by the time it's time to prune it again it'll be the same size so i do i'm not telling anybody else to but i do <laughs> all right we have the time over here and i don't normally talk about the time too much but it is growing very nicely and i'm going to harvest that too it's actually flowering but i can cut it and it'll start to grow again and so the time is looking good i'm not sure how old it is maybe two years um there goes some more comfrey so i will be able to start making tea very excited the other oregano bush is also ready to be cut again <laughs> so we will go ahead and get that cut sometime this week uh the apple tree still has the rust i think um I think that's what it is, Rust. I'm not really sure. Y'all can tell me if you knew, but it still has that. So um, I didn't get any flowers this year, so it's cool anyway. Um, I'll just cut it and keep trying. <laughs> the rosemary back here is growing amazingly. Like, I think I'm ready to start to pull it and harvest some of it. Um, it's so much stuff down here. The lavender is starting to attempt to get a little bit bigger um wormwood is getting huge i really need to 
look up how I use that because it is medicinal so that I can start um, to use that wormwood. Okay, look. Look at the grapevine, y'all. I turned it in on itself. It was everywhere. It was growing up the trees. It was growing up this trellis. It was growing everywhere. And I know I needed a much bigger space for it, but I only have the space that I have. And so I turned it in on itself. I do know what that means for the grape harvest, <laughs> but I did. I just kind of piled it all back up on top of itself. But there are grapes. Let me show you. Look right there. Y'all see that? There are grapes. Wait a minute. There are grapes growing. There are a few of them. There's some more right there. So I'm still excited because I do think I'm going to get a grape harvest. Am I going to get the biggest grape harvest I could? Probably not because these grapes want to be able to vine as long as they can. I don't have that space for them, but just some grapes would be cool. <laughs> Down under the grapevine is a lot more comfrey. Lots and lots of comfrey, and this comfrey actually did spray it because I did not plant this much comfrey. <laughs> this sage plant is looking good. Now that I have the space, I will be coming out here to harvest this too to let it dry. And this peach tree is also looking good. Look. So we'll be getting some peaches off of that one soon too. I'm out of there. <laughs> I'm out of there, y'all. Okay. Anywho, um, lots more echinacea. And I'm going to harvest this too. Maybe not all of it because the bees are loving this echinacea. Uh, what? There goes one right there. So sweet. Um, so we're going to harvest some of that echinacea because it can be used medicinally too. So one of the things I took a hit on is my daisies. And so just as a way to clean it up because it was laying all down in the ground i have tied it up but i'm probably going to cut them and i believe they're going to start growing back as the season goes on i just didn't have a chance to do that there was so much to do when i got home um, i had told my son that he didn't need to worry about watering the orchard area and i guess because this was over here he figured he didn't need to which is fine um, because daisies are perennial they will come back next year if i don't have that big huge bush this year it's cool i'm not i'm not tripping at all he did like i said he did an amazing job because he does not do this this is my this is this is my hobby <laughs> next to the echinacea and the daisies are the bean plants that we harvested a couple of uh maybe a week or so ago together uh the ones at the end that are struggling they are they're looking better they're getting better um, i'm just continuing to water them they are trying to put out some beans and so that's cool um like i probably should harvest that which i probably will um but yeah, these plants are also still putting out beans. They are looking a little malformed because I don't think they got the water that they needed while I was gone. But I have started or I have been watering every day at this point. This is not, I'm not telling anyone to water every day, but I'm sure my garden was not did not get the water that it should have so i'm watering every day just to get it back to the moisture level that it should have especially since it's so hot outside and i'm sure i'm going to see an improvement um, i'm not worried about it at all so um yeah those are the bean plants then there are the cherry and the grape tomatoes back here i took a loss on one let me show you so this one here just didn't make it um, and there were a lot more. I, the top of it, I took the top off. All of them that were down here, I let them ripen. So these few still have uh, need to be ripened. Um, and then I'll take them off. This was, unfortunately, my Isis candy. Um, so that was a new one this year. I won't actually get to experience when it's warm and the sugars are nice because it, it didn't make it. <laughs> um, but we have the sun peach over here that is still looking good i'm actually letting them grow suckers because they're so small um, i feel like if i allow them to grow suckers for one i have plenty of space on this trellis because they're so skinny and small um, also i feel like i can get a little more off of them if i let them grow suckers so i'm letting them grow suckers and then i'm just attaching the suckers to the trellis as well then you have 
Oh wait, this is another Isis candy. Oh, well, look at that. Isn't that awesome? I will get to try the Isis candy because um, this is one here with a few yellow leaves at the bottom. So it's a little bit, um, I imagine it's some kind of disease, but it's not affecting the whole plant. That plant's pretty tall, actually. Um, and then there's more cherry tomatoes. And then this is the Brad's Atomic Grape. And that's looking good. We got a few that are ripening, um, giving them some time. I find that the Brad's Atomic Grape needs a long time to actually ripen to taste well. So I leave them on the vine until they're like purple and translucent looking. Um, have you tried it? Do you like them? I like them, but uh, they take a minute to, to actually get, to get ripened. And if you're not new here, this is the black cherry that was so small and struggling. And look at it, y'all. It's growing. So, and we actually have tomatoes on it. So I'm very happy that I decided to go ahead and plant that because it's growing. <laughs> so also in this bed are some marigolds. They're finally starting to get bigger. I know marigolds can get huge. I had them here last year and they were pretty big. Um, so I'm not sure though. <laughs> I'm feeling like I picked up a dwarf variety. I'll show you that when we get to the other beds where I put the same marigolds in. Like, I'm feeling like I made a mistake and picked up a dwarf variety. <laughs> All right, so the chamomile is looking parched. Still trying to grow chamomile, but it's looking parched. Um, these are the pretty calendula that I was telling you about. So they are coming out very pretty, like burgundy and yellow. Um, and so this one is about to, to die. I'm going to go ahead and deadhead it. But... They are coming out looking very pretty. The tromboncino squash starting to grow. Um, I think they'll be jumping on the trellis sooner or later, but they are starting to grow. I'm happy to see that. We have a pretty long growing season here. My chickens. <laughs> We have a pretty long growing season here, so I'm not worried that they aren't up and on the trellis already because we don't get our first frost until sometime in November. There is plenty of time for them to start to grab this trellis. What I am worried about is the heat. I'm hopeful that um, the heat does not become a problem for the tromboncino squash. <laughs> On the other side of the trellis is one other tromboncino squash. This is a borage. I did plant it there. Um, the other tromboncino squash didn't come up, so I'll just let that run up the trellis too. Um, it's not going to actually vine, but I can keep it going up the trellis. Um, you know, plan B. <laughs> the uh, asparagus tied that up again. It was getting wild again, but we have new asparagus coming. The borage was laying on this one but there's one right there that's coming and i actually harvested some yesterday so as they come up i'm really paying attention because i really want to try that asparagus i really do um, i'm in my third year and it's the year that i can actually eat it and i want to be able to eat it this year moving towards the entrance is the loofah and the loofah is starting to you know go up the trellis um it'll start throwing out like side vines soon and it'll start to fill the trellis out too there has been so many loofah in here that did not get pollinated but it's cool i will probably start to fertilize these with the comfrey tea um, they maybe have enough nitrogen now they need some phosphorus so that they can start to put out flowers so the the loofah is still looking good in my opinion you know we still have new things growing it's gonna fill out soon over here we have our passion fruit vine this one had actually stunted a bit and um it's doing well now so it's starting to come up the trellis this one here always was doing well it's actually about to meet the loofah <laughs> so you have to kind of tell loofah where you want it to be or it's gonna go where it wants to go so yeah by the way I am thinking right here, this is where the old greenhouse was and now apparently where the grill is going to be. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to open up this fencing, pull it this way, and I'm gonna put more asparagus here. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, back here is a whole entire mess. I am defrosting the freezer, which will be in 
my next video the trash doesn't come until tomorrow the pool is still the pool <laughs> gross um and so it's a bit of a mess back there in case you were wondering <laughs> all right here we go um first bed when you walk in is our snapdragons that i need to prune again snap off the uh, things that have already flowered so that it can flower again although it is getting pretty hot so i don't know if that's gonna happen um the calendula is looking good over here so just been deadheading it these are I, i'm not actually taking these off to save because they're so pretty i'm just keeping them I think my leeks took a hit y'all they were looking a lot better they're looking very parched at this point and I don't know if it's already too far gone but I'm leaving them and I'm still watering them because that's just what I do this is why I think I purchased <laughs> dwarf marigolds they're all very small even the plants are small <laughs> and I know it's hot but marigolds can survive in in the heat and I'm thinking I purchased dwarf marigolds back here the beans are looking amazing flowers everywhere these are bush beans um, and so I'm pretty sure we'll be getting a harvest of bush beans soon back here oh look the I wanted to show you all this the um, roselle looking good the roselle looks like it's gonna give me some roselle <laughs> peppers back here like this one is growing really good um there's basil back here also trying to grow well i do think that i need to give this soil some more nutrients i really do i'm not sure exactly what it needs um I am probably going to try the comfrey tea in this bed as well. It just seems like it needs something other than the fish emulsion. Um, the compost definitely did it well to green it up, but I think it just needs something else. So we're going to play around with that um, this week too to figure out exactly what this bed needs. Someone asked about the ginger the other day and I never show it. I don't even think to show it sometimes, but it's over here and it's still growing. That's one bag right there. And then that's the other bag. Sometimes I forget to water them because I forget they're over there. <laughs> and so back to the bed that we were talking about. Um, these are some squash or zucchini. They're looking pretty good, you know, they're looking good. Um, and that's another one over there. It's looking a little yellow. So we're gonna figure out, we're gonna figure out this bed. <clears throat> the beans seem to be fine. So we're gonna figure out what's going on in this bed though. But there's six pepper plants back there. Uh, what, four basil back there. There are the roselle. There's some zinnias back there. And then there's also a dahlia over here in the corner. So we're gonna figure it out. I am probably going to put some more compost back there um, and then I'm probably also going to fertilize with the comfrey tea um, and we will see, we'll see what the difference is. <laughs> this bed over here is looking absolutely amazing. Need to harvest this Swiss chard again. Um, then the basil in the middle is actually looking amazing now. If you were here when we planted it, um, it was very small and it struggled but it is looking really good now i've been pulling the flowers off of it where i see it's about to flower so that it doesn't get bitter on me because this week i plan to harvest the herbs now that i have a place for them to dry <laughs> yeah there's beans back here too these are bush beans i watered and i think i knocked them over when i was watering but they are starting to grow some beans so we'll be harvesting those too um, this cayenne long pepper is really getting its getting its footing and starting to throw off some peppers back here there's more swiss chard also six pepper plants a dahlia and a roselle and then there's that one little marigold the pole bean trellis that's in between the two beds is looking good the ones on this side got a slower start than the ones on this side i think i told you that before i harvested so many beans off of this when i got home um like this this one and this is my favorite it's purple potted 
Um, and so, yeah, it's very prolific and I, I harvested a lot off of that when I got home. These over here, I don't remember what they are, but if you see like the ones here, much shorter than the ones over here, they got a, uh, they got a slow start, but they're growing and that needs to be harvested but that's a there's beans growing over here too and then all around the bed there are still onions attempting to bulb and they are bulbing so i am leaving them so all around this bed there is one left over here um and so it actually looks like it's splitting but i'm leaving them for now to let them continue to bulb um and and when they fall over i'll pull them out and let them dry i've done much better with onions this year not the best harvest but for me i'm very proud of it because i actually grew onions that had decent sized bulbs on them one of my most exciting things i got a dwarf a teddy bear sunflower um it's it's still it's starting to grow more too and there's one back there if you were here, you know the struggle that I had with the teddy bear sunflowers. Um, and I was just like, I give up. <laughs> but those were two that struggled. They're growing. I'm happy to see that. This is the eggplant bed, which also has nasturtiums in it. Also has a borage in it. <laughs> but I think I replanted that one there. Um, but the eggplant are growing. I harvested some eggplant the other day. So, yep still having flea beetle issues also but they're still they're still growing the nasturtiums are looking really good someone asked me how i'm keeping those nasturtiums alive those nasturtiums are in shade for a good portion of the day um, it also hasn't been super hot here yet it's hot today um, it's been hot this week but before that it hasn't been super hot um, once it gets super hot, they're going to start to struggle too. I'm not doing anything special. Um, the shade may be helping, but I'm not doing anything special. And I am not expecting them to grow all the way through the summer and look as good as they do right now. Beside that bed is another loss that I took. Um, this is, this is a tomato plant that did not make it. <laughs> It has a tomato on it. It has two tomatoes on it, actually, and I harvested a couple. I could go ahead and take these two, which I will. They're blushing um, because it just didn't get water. It's cool. The good thing about it, this was a Paul Robeson. The good thing about it is I have way, I have a bunch more Paul Robesons. That's going to be one thing. But I'm going to show you the second thing that's a good thing. And now, I don't know what varieties these are. But I know we still have a season long enough to put them in. And I will. Now that I pull those off, I'll replace that. But look. My compost pal has gifted me once again. I think there's four or five tomato plants in there. So where we lost tomato plants... The compost pal and mother nature gifted me more. <laughs> so there are others that are still doing well. Pretty much the majority is still doing well. I had to do a very hard prune when I got home though. Um, that's another blushing one right there. What's that? That's a great white. That's blushing. Go ahead and take that one too while I'm out here. Um, I did lose one more on this side and that was another Paul Robeson. So if you can see right there that's the branch there's one left on it letting it ripen but lost that one as well but like i said i have paul robeson's in other places so i'm not worried about it too much um but everything else you know did pretty well let me step back and show you so yeah i'm not worried about it too much um i didn't lose anything over here in this group they're all looking good but again they were in shade so that was a plus for me on them there is another loss i will show you <laughs> right down here we have the borage that i had planted i pulled it out of the ginger bag that it had grew in um in the marshmallow also medicinal is starting to flower so i'm gonna figure out what i what i do with that <laughs> 
there's another comfrey over here like i was saying i need to get it into the ground just haven't got it into the ground but y'all look at the sweet potato bed i've started to kind of throw the vines back in here on top of themselves because they were trying to go everywhere like they were vining vining <laughs> oh look we have another blushing tomato let's go ahead and take that what's that that is a cherokee purple woohoo can go inside with the rest oh there's more over here actually i take that back we did have a loss over here i forgot about this one um this is another paul robeson might be something with the paul robesons in my area i'm not sure um but that's another paul robeson it has some blushing tomatoes on it i'll come back because i only have two hands <laughs> um but all in all look how big this thing is y'all that thing is huge i'm excited about that it's a pineapple pineapple tomato and then if you go around there's another blushing one over here but everything you know kind of seemed to have done good i'm not i'm not tripping it looks good it looks good we're gonna take it <laughs> strawberries we got some that need to be harvested too like i said haven't had a chance to really get out here and get everything but the strawberries are looking good and they're starting to produce the second set of strawberries again i really do need to come and get these because these are not one of those things you want to leave especially if you're growing them on the ground uh with no like covering because the pest will come and get them over here we got the fever few starting to flower also a medicinal herb that you can use oh look i meant to show y'all the lemon balm has taken off i'm excited about this i'm gonna harvest this when i harvest the rest of the herbs the anise hyssop has flowered not sure if i can still use it or not i need to look that up but the bees absolutely love this plant and so even if i can't use it i can definitely leave it for the bees the chamomile looking a bit parched over here too uh, chamomile likes cooler temperatures so it makes sense um, and then everything else is mint this is not mint that is a blueberry bush but back here is all mint and i am planning to harvest that mint this week too when i harvest the rest of the herbs i'm gonna sit these down somewhere <laughs> we drank a lot of mint tea in the winter and so i want all the mint <laughs> let's get back to the garden tour <laughs> oh listen <laughs> look at this zucchini plant it has a zucchini on it i'm gonna let it get a little bit bigger i harvested two since i've been home the one that was here succumbed to something i do not know what so i pulled that out um the beans on this trellis starting to go up i'm pretty sure these are long beans like uh red ones i think they're red long beans there are more bean plants down here that are trying to grow they got a slow start but i'm leaving them there's more sweet potato vines on this side planted much later than the ones over here i think they'll be fine do you guys remember the tomato plant that we took out and actually it wasn't even a plant it was a sucker so that is that sucker <laughs> so you don't have to root your suckers you can put them right into the soil they will still grow without you rooting them down here on the ground you have either squash or zucchini um, they also were moving a little slow I think they're starting to grow and they're gonna do well so i imagine over here it's gonna be full of squash plants and i'm not gonna be able to walk through here with shorts on <laughs> do y'all remember the sunflower that we took out of the compost pile that's the sunflower we took out the compost pile it has buds on it see it coming in i hope y'all can see I'm not that tall so i don't know if y'all can see or not when i edit it i'll see if y'all can see um whew, it's hot y'all sorry okay so right here we have more tomato plants they did well i did not lose anything on this side 
there's lots of tomatoes growing down there and there's new tomatoes growing you know at the top getting bigger so these those are looking good seven gallon bags um compost granulated fertilizer was put in there um and i'm not sure if i did bone meal or blood meal in them too because once i ran out i stopped doing it but those are those are growing in bags as well the ridiculous borage <laughs> <laughs> has gone wild again it's behind those tomatoes in a vigo garden bed um yeah so someone asked did these beds like warm the soil or cook the plant i'm not seeing that this is my first year you know growing in them um they were set up i did put onions in them i did the garlic in them but this is my first year in the heat of the season they don't seem to be cooking the plants the plants seem to be doing just fine in case you're interested i will put a link to the garden beds in the description um, because i don't see that there has been an issue with them i don't remember if those beds have a code or not if they do have a code i'll put my code down there so you can get some type of discount if it has it <laughs> down here we have calendula. This is looking a little bit messy, but you know what? That's that's life. Um, this is calendula. Nasturtium is down here too. Look at this bell pepper, y'all. Look at it. It is the size of my hand. I don't like green peppers, so I'm going to leave that until it turns uh, a color and then I'll pull it. But it is huge. And there's a flower trying to grow as well. By the way, those are Dollar Tree seeds, just so you know. <laughs> and this is a Golden Marconi. It's huge, too. Um, and then over there is another Cayenne Long. The rest of this bed is, is a mixed match of stuff. Um, and then that's a Volunteer Sunflower right there. Just popped up, and, and I left it. And there's another one. That volunteered I did grow my sunflowers over here last year so it makes sense the lettuce that we left is bolting and flowering um, all through this bed and so I'm just letting it do its thing until I get around to clearing it out we have some more roselle over here looking like it's gonna give some roselle flowers a couple people asked me was roselle okra um, no it's a hibiscus so uh, it's gonna be a it'll it'll give me a flower and then I think at the end of the flower that's what you use but you can also use the flower I believe go look it up go look it up y'all it's my first year growing them <laughs> back here you have the watermelon so they are vining down the pathway as I was expecting um, I was thinking they would be a little bit bigger but if you know me like I think you know me you know I have not been fertilizing it every week like I said I would <laughs> down here we have more tomatoes this is on the other side of the Vigo bed so we have more tomatoes those are blushing too I think those are the purple beauty ones right here that's blushing um, but there's more I think this is a great white large tomatoes so there's tomatoes all through here too on the back of the bed that I said is like a mismatch bed. Oh, you know what else is in the mismatch bed? Melons. There's melons growing in here too. There's one right there. And then there's another one right here. So I'm pretty sure they're cantaloupe. My daughter loves cantaloupe. I do not eat them, but she does. So I'm going to leave those and let them grow. There's more over here on this side too. I'm probably going to plant something else because if you remember I was telling you about this one. Yeah, I don't think it's going to do anything. <laughs> so like I was saying, behind the mismatch bed is some more tomatoes. And I also haven't done a great job getting back out here to continue, um, you know, putting my string up for the Florida weave. I'm going to try to do that sometime this week as well. But we have blushing tomatoes down here too. I need to come out here and get, this is a pineapple, huge as well. Pineapple tomatoes grow big and they are pretty delicious. This one right here is a white tonsil. Hasn't started blushing yet. But yeah, I gotta get out here and put the strings back up. And that's on all the tomatoes, not just these ones. <laughs> 
over here had to do a huge prune, a very hard prune. These are in full sun, like they're in sun for most of the day. And so that's why you're not seeing any leaves at the bottom, but you do see tomatoes. <laughs> um, so that's what I had to do. And I've harvested some. We have some more blushing ones out here too. So I did have a loss over here. Completely forgot about that. This is an Amish paste. Um, it did not make it through. It did not make it through. But there are a lot of tomatoes on here that I'm leaving to ripen. Um, I have other Amish paste too. I think there's one right beside it. It's actually an Amish paste. So we did take one more loss. It's cool. Um, so over here, you have the other tomatoes. Again, had to do a really hard prune on these, but they, they're, they're gonna be fine. Um, I did it mostly at the bottom um, because the leaves at the bottom were, were looking pretty bad, but the top is looking fine on all of these. And so I'm happy about it. These are determinants over here and we have tomatoes growing in here too. So um, these are Ace 55s. So everything is looking good. Um, I'm not complaining one bit. Last but not least, is the flower bed which needs some love but by the way the hollyhocks they're starting to bloom i'm so excited that's from last year it'll die out i'll have to replant it thought they were perennial they're biennial someone said that um these are the foxgloves i'm gonna cut them back all of them that have flowered and see if they will come up again i see there's new shoots coming so that's cool the echinacea is about to start flowering over here too. The mums down here in the sun, oh my goodness, <laughs> they look horrible. I don't think they're gonna make it, but um, everything else is looking all right. I'm gonna cut the snapdragons again, see if I can get another bloom, like I said, on the back. Um, calendula in here, there's a dahlia that I need to stake up. Actually, the flower bed was not the last thing. I forgot all about my little bed inside of my greenhouse, y'all. So, it is looking better than it was when we put them in. Still kind of skinny. But if you remember, the top had broke off of this. This wasn't even here. This one does not want to stay. <laughs> Figure that out. This wasn't even here. So we got new growth growing on that. There's a tomato on here. It was already there, <laughs> but it is, it's looking good in here. The top had broke off of this one too, and we're getting, you know, side shoots or uh, suckers. Um, and this one is looking good too. Also, the nettle, which I dare not touch, is looking good. Plantain over here is looking good. And the lovage, I don't know. It's not looking the best, but it's still alive, so. That'll work for me. I also forget to water these. <laughs> I haven't watered those since I put them in. Definitely have to do better with that. <laughs> I'm happy with how the garden looks. Um, after I was gone for so long, I'm happy that my son was able to keep it alive. I'm happy he was willing to keep it alive because some kids might not. <laughs> he's not a kid, he's an adult. But, but this is not his thing, it's my thing. So I'm very happy that he was willing to do this for me and that I came home and I still had a productive garden. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye y'all.